Fanjanowski, the absolute legend, the legend of Nike SB, the guy that kind of changed um, what it meant to have. What did happen with him, Stefanowski? The legend goes that he had a, and in, what did he have? He had like a, he had his own shoe. He really stuck to his guns. He ended up designing his own shoe from the ground up. And then he ended up taking a portion of the sales. But then it was selling so well, Nike didn't want to continue paying him that portion of sales. And then he, he made them pay up, I don't know, close to $4 million or something stupid like that. He got paid out something dumb like $4 million or something. And then now the Despies have been kind of absorbed into the... The Jonskis have been absorbed into the general, you know, SB lineup. He doesn't get a percentage of them anymore, but he got kind of bought out of his contract, which was kind of insane for a skateboarder at that time. So, you know, most skateboarders don't earn that kind of money unless you're like, you know, one of those cute skateboarders. So for Janoski to earn that kind of amount of money at this level of time is amazing. But also, go speak to his influence. You know, you, there was a period of time when everybody, everybody under the sun was wearing Stefan Janoski's, man. I tried to wear them for a period of time, but unfortunately, my legs, my feet at the time were, probably I'll be able to wear them now, but at the time, my feet were super flat. I didn't really have much of an art arch on my foot now because i've been training quite well and i've been wearing quite a lot of flat shoes what i train in um nike metcons i took out the insole um i do a lot of work deadlifting in bare feet i do a lot of work um doing my back squats on bare feet too positioning my feet in a certain way doing loads of exercise and mobility work so i've got a, a nice developed arch i probably could wear them nowadays but i remember just them being really flimsy really thin but if you re listen to his story it kind of goes back to what he kind of wanted in his overall shoe. And they've got a little documentary here that kind of speaks about um, what he basically done on um, Hype Beast. I've mentioned here. Let me just pull this up. Um, we'll quickly check this out. Let me just put it up in a new window, actually, to make this easier to check out. I'll load it on here. This is a little documentary from Stefan Janowski on Nike SB. 10th anniversary. Such a legendary stream, and I had like I don't know how many colorways of this I had, probably like four. Insane. It pissed off a lot of people. It went into a full rage <laughs> because they're like, this doesn't look like a Nike shoe. I'm <laughs> really good at being stubborn. His anger made him more sharp on what he wanted. I don't think he makes anything easy for anybody. It's so him because it genuinely came from him. Good for him that he stuck to his guns. That's pretty Point Rodriguez. Looks so, so much older, right now, isn't it? Nike in. 2006 or seven or five yeah around that stefan at the time awesome. was, he was on fire yeah nobody was skating like stefan's style he was absolutely the switch master he's tall and lanky long flowing hair and he has a penchant for wearing flowy clothes as well and i mean this in the nicest way it's kind of like a wet noodle <laughs> that's a good description of him very charming kind of like wow look how much older paul rodriguez looks on p rod man p rod's a fucking legend the amount of stick he got back in the day for being like one of the you know i don't know he was probably one of the biggest probably one of the biggest commercial skateboards out there who's the other kid the white kid i forgot his name um the kind of justin bieber looking dude super ripped but remember p rod man he was huge back in the day for kids man we used to be embarrassed to say we're fans of him but we loved p rod man i know i did anyway i love p rod he, he, he epitomized everything it was to be like a, a professional skateboarder um he didn't you know he wasn't really about all the mess life he just went around the competitions smashing those things winning them big cash prizes bagging sponsors keeping it moving man absolute legend paul rodriguez man big up him he looks so much older now isn't it? it's so cool <laughs> He'll be doing really high-level, difficult tricks and look like he's half asleep. And everybody was just like, we need to go after Stefan. He always had two, three video parts a year for like a five, six-year period. He was such a hot commodity. We wanted to come up with the shoe very quickly. Nice. But yeah, it didn't work out that way. Jay Marizuli. Hey, we're going to tune some more signature shoes and you're the next one. What was the initial plan? Oh, there was no plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sort of whipped the shoe out of the bag and he sort of looked at it. I don't like bulging toes on shoes. <laughs> no, flat toe, flat toe, flat toe. Awesome. Most athletes didn't have an aesthetic point of view. He had a different agenda. My shoe, my way. That's what I said. I don't care. I don't have a shoe now. And if you don't do it the way I want it, then I still won't have a shoe. Doesn't matter to me. I wish there was more athletes that did that or more um creative individuals and stuff i think you're seeing it nowadays i'm thinking i'm thinking of the likes of 
Heron Preston, Virgil Abloh and Matthew Williams as, a, as an example, right? They're not skateboarders, but, you know, those kind of, and maybe even Jerry Lorenzo get, get him involved too. And um, Yoon from Ambush. And you're seeing a real difference. You're seeing a real change in what the creatives want to do with Nike in terms of shoes and apparel. Instead of going out there and just like rehashing a colorway or whatever, I think they're very aware that, number one, they're probably the clientele they want to speak to. They're not necessarily sneakerheads, but they're going for the kind of fashion, design, creative, um, aspiring creative crowd who want something a bit different, like the Tom Sachs, Miles Yard, whatever. It wouldn't have been fun if Tom Sachs just went and redesigned an Air Force One or changed the colorway. It wouldn't have been as more of an interesting project. But the fact that he went and kind of built a shoe from the ground up, uh, took the sole from an SFB, made a different upper, different kind of materials, made a sole that kind of absorbs dirt and kind of the more dirt you get, the better it looks. I think that's a new introduction we're seeing. Probably more, maybe it's a indication of the confidence the creatives have in their own work or maybe it's also a reflection of what the customer wants right they're no longer i think back then stefan joski could have easily got away with just do, doing a color of a blazer of a of match court low of a dunk low of a dunk mid and, and no one would have complained but i think nowadays that same level of attention would be even greater appreciated now because things are just so you know rehashed or retro looking but you have to give credit to people like matthew williams virgil um heron preston yoon from ambush um the girl from cactus plant flea market you know they're going for it and trying to reintroduce different introducing different models um upgrading them in a different way different kind of aesthetic not going for the easy kind of low-hanging fruit it takes a lot of courage to do that honestly Stefan Janowski's shoe has to be what Stefan Janowski says. Basically, he told us, this is not my shoe. I don't know how you came up with this. What were you thinking? We were both had different ideas. <laughs> Picked it up and looked at it, and he threw it back at us. I, don't know, I love him. Something out there. <laughs> what is this? That's not my shoe. Mm -hmm. You really have to start from ground zero again. Just a lot of phone calls, drawing, pictures. Stefan was, you know, a wild card. We went back and forth for a really long time. It took a while for them, I think, to realize, like, all right, this guy's not budging. What does he want again? His pet peeve was that skate shoes were too big, too puffy. As he skated, he couldn't feel the board. Stefan was very adamant about making a shoe that was paper thin. Skate shoes at the time were just Yeah, massive. That, that explains why I had so much trouble wearing them, because my big corn bunion -y riddled feet were just rubbing up against it i could feel the grip tape rubbing against my toe every flick every drag every pull was just fucking breaking me and of course without an arch as well my flat foot it just wasn't working so ex that explains it now it, at the time i thought it was a i thought it was a design defect but now hearing his personality hearing how he speaks about things and hearing what he wants to feel on his shoes it makes complete sense kind of like wearing a kleenex box on your foot jesus Armored christ tank type shoes hmm. like potatoes for your feet stubby toed puffy suede potato his first <laughs> sort of statement was i want a shoe built with the least amount of material the closest wow. to being a foot we jump off big sets of stairs big gaps big grinding out big hand rows we're taking a lot of impact so people were trying to find the indestructible shoe but the only problem with the indestructible shoe is you want to have a real close connection with your board you have these bulky heavy shoes just came with his own set of issues <laughs> the closer my feet are to my skateboard the more connected I feel. wow the shoe part is just to make your foot look good but the foot is really what helps you skate that's cool man for him it really was i want to feel the board scraping across my foot i want my ankles look how good to be they look. bloody i want a shoe that's going to make my foot bleed i want my foot to bleed what a statement to make i want my foot to bleed from the time imagine being the creators out there when you're making that shoe and he's telling you i want my foot to bleed you're like uh okay i guess straight <laughs> to the factory flew out to asia and just started building something the trick with skateboarding is a very abusive sport on the shoes, so we needed to create a shoe that was both durable as well as minimally built. Some of the things I would say in, the, in my temper tantrums were like, you are Nike. You can do anything. Yeah, yeah I love it. <laughs> oh, he said that? Great. Mm. He definitely had a temper tantrum about it. That's why I was so hard on them, because I knew that they could make believe that shoe ever. Look how they clean that looks, look man. Like a Nike looks one. beautiful, doesn't it? It was completely out of left field. Yeah. At the time, they were trying to push technologies and all our studies and research mm. and development. There was a lot of very expensive looking technical shoes. Multiple airbags. Exactly. So for that to come at that time, that was really revolutionary. System fused to the outside of the shoe. Futuristic looking mesh and rubber. And Stefan's shoe had none of that. Yeah, exactly. You said you wanted to 
low as possible. We worked with the factory to get it so low that they said it was illegal to produce and we had to sign a bunch of Oh, that's cool. Awesome. With that, illegally low. Just <laughs> about the shoe. Our bosses brought all of us into the office, and the reaction was terrible. They hated it. <laughs> other pro athlete shoes up there that looked two hundred to three hundred dollars, and you know we we're coming out with a seventy-five dollar shoe using a hundred-year-old technology. It looks awesome, though. One of my first tasks was organizing the launch party for the shoe, and Stefan had this list of demands that dancers and snakes yeah. doves to be released upon his entrance <laughs> Synth on tap unbelievable they assumed that it would tank they bought so light that it became a rare commodity not by strategy but because of fear okay that makes sense because i remember that too i remember them being really hard to get the first drop around i think i got the first batch i remember i think i was working at 1948 when they first released i'm pretty sure and I remember trying to get a pair from Slam City Skates, not being able to get them. And I remember, I think for, I don't know why, but I remember we having, we got some as well in 94. Yeah, I don't know why we had some in the store, but we ended up having some. Um, they're really hard to come by, especially the the standard black pair that was sort of like navy looking. I remember that being super hard to get. So that explains it. It wasn't even a strategic thing. They just weren't, they weren't really sure they were going to sell well. Okay. Gun, trying to get it done, but also making sure that Stefan was happy as well. That pressure produce greatness. When did you know that you had something special? I think it was when Stefan didn't give our shoe back. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. We had to have the factory remake another sample while Stefan was skating. First sample was like, yeah, it's perfect. You know? Wow. Yeah, I don't think I gave him that. <laughs> it just started picking up and picking up and by the second year it became bigger than we thought. Mm. Third, fourth year, we're like, what's going on? It started taking over the rest of our business. Mm. It became a massive hit. It was selling really well. I'm pretty sure you got bought out of this contract, didn't you? I'm pretty sure they're going to mention that one. Probably so not. Me personally and the small team that worked on the shoe, we loved it. So good. It was a shoe that we felt we wanted to wear. We knew the skateboarding community would gravitate towards it because it was so special. It was about the craft and the make of it. It was one of those shoes that as soon as you lay your eyes on it, you know it's a home run. Yeah. I can't really emphasize enough how important it was for us to create our own unique shoe. Up until that point, our biggest successes were vintage shoes. Yeah, I think shit. What it did was it shifted the paradigm of what an athletic shoe could look like. It was Stefan fighting for what he believed in. At Nike, they have a wall. There you go, the man. Top 100 shoes. And Stefan's shoe sits on that wall. Wow. It is within the there you go, man. That, that's a lesson learned for all creators out there. Stick to your guns, no matter what people say in the beginning, especially if it's... I think the the point of this story would be not so much stick to your guns in the hope that you're going to become Stefan Janowski and have a best-selling Nike shoe. Um, you're not really... If that's not really the point of it. The point of it is that if you get the opportunity to collaborate with a brand like Nike or you get the opportunity to collaborate with any sort of brand, a brand you highly respect, you're better off sticking with your guns, going with something that you think is going to work for you, is, is your own vision, and dying by that sword than going with what they think, especially the marketing team or the advisors, who all mean well, but again, they're not, they don't have your vision. And then with, when, that's, when that fails, that's going to hurt even more. And if it succeeds, it's going to feel empty because it's, really, it's not really your idea. And most creatives, most true creatives, they, don't, they know when it's not their idea. They have, they, they're a bit embarrassed to claim it as their own, especially if they're being lauded or being supported. It's like, I didn't really do this. So it's better to die, die on your own sword, go with your own design, go with your gut, and hopefully it works out. Hopefully you end up like Stefan Janowski. You get, you know, you get a nice little pay packet out of it, or you end up going in, going down in the Nike Wall Hall of Fame kind of thing. That sounds fucking amazing. I, I didn't know that. One of the tops, one of the top 100 selling shoes. I wonder what the 100 selling shoes are. There might be some real um, curveballs in that list, I'd imagine, right? I'd imagine Air Force Ones and all that sort of shit's going to be on there, you know, um, standard. But I wonder what the kind of real odd ones might be maybe it's something like a nike epic uh, air max light i don't think so because that retro was terrible maybe air trainer one wonder what the 100 top selling shoes are anyway another time but yeah that's a that's a video out at the moment i'm gonna link in the show notes it's called nike sb stefan janowski for daily use i think they're celebrating the 10th anniversary of the shoe um so yeah i'm um, definitely check that out i'm sure they'll be having loads of activations around it too probably to kind of celebrate that as well but who knew who knows probably check it out link in the show notes for those of you that care